Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back to talk for Go, and this time talk about the upcoming Galdea Summer event, which should be coming up pretty soon. Uh, that's gonna be today's video, I hope you like it, and let's get right into it. So, first things first, um, we don't have a confirmed date for the actual event to be starting. When would be the best time to kind of guess when it's starting? Well, if we look here at the hunting quest, this ends on the 21st, so... Probably not, either they could do it literally the night of the 21st, and then it would be here technically the 22nd, but maintenance would start on the 21st, and then it would be here on Tuesday. Uh, on the JP side of the game, which we can look at real quick because their schedule was really funny, after the hunting quest, it ended for them after a week on the 27th, and then... It actually happened was a pre-release. Oh, that's right. We have to do a pre-release campaign. I for is there actually anything in the pre-release campaign? Oh, well, I guess we're also talking about the pre-release campaign. So chances are the pre-release campaign is going to be coming out first, right when this event ends, or as it's going on actually. And this will have a banner which features Drake, Nemo, the pirates, and Calamity Jane on it. Uh, when that gets announced, I guess I should actually do a video on that, but this is already about summer. But yeah, the pre-release will happen, and then right after the pre-release, a week later, then we get the summer event. So, let's see, if we go by here, it ends on the 21st, that would mean a week later we would have the pre-campaign, the pre-campaign would maybe end on the 28th, and then on the 29th is when it would start... Yeah, okay. Let's let's assume that that's the current plan and d assuming that this pre-release campaign does not happen in the mental middle of the hunting quest as well. So, you know, that's when you would probably best be looking for it. But that's just a guess guess on my part to be 100% real with you. But anyway, let's go back into the Kaldea Summer Adventure. The actual event itself, it's pretty normal. It's another summer event. I think this time we're going to be hunting for treasure as always as I like to say. I don't play the JP version of the game mainly, and I don't look too deep into how the actual events play out so I can experience it myself and see how it is and have a bunch of fun with that. But you can see here the new costume dress for the man are Achilles, uh, Medicardo, and Blackbeard. The first time and the last time I assume that they ever included a... Fr I guess technically I would consider three star male servants is free to play servants unless they're limited but either way it would be cool if they kind of did more of these i i like that they actually gave blackbeard a new um costume dress i think it's neat and there's plenty of two to three uh, two to one stars that i would love to have a costume given to them even if i don't actually use them for gameplay purposes but anyway the new unit that's going to be on it is going to be da vinci rider which you can see right there not da vinci rider but it is a little da vinci right here who will be a ruler what she does right here is she has a little dinosaurs with her. Um, she is a ruler. She is one quick, two arts, two buster. First skill is Dream Machine A. Increases one ally's quick performance, arts performance, and buster performance for three turns, and it's 20% for every single one of them. Second skill is Treasure Checker B. Charges one ally's MP gauge. Increases their MP generation rate for three turns, 20% and 30%. And third skill is Shine at the Twilight EX, increases party's MP damage for three turns, overcharges party's MP of one stage for one turn, reduces all enemies' critical attack chance for three turns, MP damage is 20%, crit chance is 20%. The passive skills are Writing EX, Item Construction A, and Magic Resistance B. Third skill is an Anti-Alter Ego a Damage Attack Aptitude, which is an increase against Alter Egos. And a rank A Noble Phantasm is a 3 hit buster, deals damage to one enemy, grants one random buff from these three effects, only one can be activated. A green bullet gained 30 crit stars, 33% uh, chance. Blue bullet charges party's MP gauge by 20%, 33% chance. Red bullet increases party's attack by 20% for 3 turns, 33%, and the damage is at MP level 1, if for whatever reason you have her at MP level 1. It's 600%. Uh, if you get her all the way to MP5, it's M1000, which you should because she is free. The overcharge effect is the increase of MP damage by one turn. And at 100%, it's 20%. And all the way at the final level, it is 40%. Okay. This unit seems pretty cool, actually. Only doing this to one enemy. All right. 
She is a buster type, so that means you could use her with Tamamo and Vich, so in which case we should look at the cooldowns. The first skill cooldown is five turns, the second skill cooldown is five turns, and the third skill- wow, all of, all of them are five turn cooldowns? That's kinda- <laughs> that's really good. Um, for a- for a free, for sure. I don't know, this unit seems really fun to actually just kinda mess around and use. I don't know if I would ever use her for- Mm, so it would be fun as like a side little like there's definitely ways to use her as a support of some kind uh in various team comps if you can think outside the box a little bit like this one charging one ally's mp gauging increasing their mp generation rate for three turns it's 20 percent, but the 30 percent mp rate can actually be pretty useful in some cases mm, with a unit like this where where they're supporting and it's like a tiny support i think it's kind of neat to give this unit kind of a freeze just so people can play around and have like Obviously, this isn't the most optimal thing in the world, but at the same time, you can use them. <laughs> this actually feels usable in some ways, and I think that's fun to use for team comps and stuff. And like I said, she's literally free, so you can just use her whenever. And during summertime, it's actually my favorite time to just use whatever units I want. And just kind of go like, eh, you know what, who cares about anything like three-turning it or doing anything too effectively. Let me just have some fun on here. And she could definitely be used for that. That's Da Vinci though, and Ruler also means that she would take not a lot of damage from a lot of dudes, but she also wouldn't be dealing that much damage, but it's okay because it's an easy MP5 on this case. This being random is, uh, <laughs> obviously you can't rely on it, but I think all these effects are pretty nice actually. Uh, especially, uh, just free 30 crit stars whenever you use this ability. Pretty nice. And yeah, that's going to be the free unit. In terms of the banner one, this is going to be the first banner, so this is the one I'm going to be talking about. This one has Okita, Alter, Anastasia, and V, I guess tech, yeah, Anastasia and V, it's two of them. And Charlotte Carday, which is as here as a caster and a four star. And um, the CEs are Angel Heart, Pinky Beach, and Pirates of the Jungle. None of them that I think are too crazy to look at, but they are very nice to look at when you look at them that way. So there you go. Let's go into the actual units. We have Charlotte. Let's go start with Charlotte. She's a caster. She is a one quick three arts one buster caster. Her first skill is Illusionist False C+. Increases own arts performance for three turns. Inflict confusion status for three turns to all enemies. 30% chance to activate the DB buff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to seal their skills for one turn. Grants party evasion for one attack one turn. And then the arts up is 30%, which is pretty nice. Second skill is Ludicrous Show Planning A. Chance to seal one enemy's skill for one turn. Gain crit stars every turn for three turns. That increases party's MP damage by 20% for three turns. The skill seal chance is 100%, and the star regen is 10 at level 10. Um, Angel of Tricks EX charges on MP gauge, charges one ally's MP gauge. Oh, wait, really? So she. Okay, that's nice. 30% and 30%. <laughs> that's a very nice. On a six turn cooldown, too. This is 6, and this is also 6. 6, 6, 6. Passive skills, Magic Show Field EX, and Magic Goods Create EC+. C plus. Third skill is an Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. They're just out for the Alter Egos in this one. And her Noble Phantom is a Rank C++ plus plus, um, a single target. La Fairy Do Nut. To be applauded is the dream of for one night. That doesn't seem like that fits all that, but sure, let's go with it. Um, I also completely butchered that. Five hits, arts, single target, gain 20 crit stars, that's the effect, and it deals damage. MP level 1, it's 900% damage, and all the way at MP level 5, it is uh, uh, 1500. Deals extra damage to enemies with skill seal. Wow, okay. Deals extra damage to enemies with the skill steal status. 150% at level 1. And all the way at level 5, it's 200%. And that's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a very interesting overcharge to give to someone. Uh, obviously, if you can actually inflict... Uh... If you can actually inflict that on someone, you can deal some decent damage. Here's the problem, though. She is a caster. <laughs> Casters kind of have it a little bit rough when it comes to damage, but if you're using double Castoria, which we can currently in NA, which is why I'm going to be mentioning it, and I'm not mentioning any of the future potential arts buffers, but just go with that. Oh, and I guess Tamamo, so you can use Tamamo and her at the same time. But either way, um, you can end up having her deal a lot of damage. The skill ceiling one 
The problem with a lot of the times when it comes to skill ceiling is that it typically lasts a single turn. Her first skill does actually make it so that it has a, for three turns, there's a 30% chance that they'll have it. But that's still only a single turn, so if it's not up there, it's a little bit silly. You could make an entire team that's dedicated to this one ability to skill to, see, to seal skills uh, to get it so that you always get this off. And that seems like a really funny idea to do it with. And But in terms of actual, <laughs> in terms of actual fights, I'm not 100% sure how effective that would be. But still, that's a pretty neat way of using a unit. It's a very different kind of ability. And if you can actually get that all off, it is going to be dealing a lot of damage. So it does it does feel like one of those uh, kind of puzzly type of units where it's like, okay, let's uh, let's work together in here and see if we can make this gimmick work in some way. Which I think it would be a fun one to actually kind of mess around with and try. But there you go. There's Charlotte. Next we have Anastasia and V. Or Vi. I don't know actually 100%. She is an archer, two quick, two arts, one buster. First skill is the sh 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 Shivitz, Summer, B+. I'm probably also pronouncing that terribly. Increase on arts performance for three turns and then charges on MP gauge. 30%, 50%, okay, pretty nice. For a four star, having a 50% charge, it's pretty nice. I can't think of too many that actually have it that are four star. There's plenty I can think of that have it at five star. I can also think of plenty of five stars that have it at 30%, but either way, what I'm trying to say is that that's pretty nice, and it's also tied to increasing our arts performance, which is neato burrito. Grant self invincibility for one turn, uh, freezing summertime, eh? Increase zone buff for your removal resistance for one single turn, and then gain crit stars, 20 crit stars, 100% boost for removal resistance, and that's a cooldown of five. I should have mentioned the first one, it's a cooldown of seven. Ooh, wow, that's actually a big cooldown. Let your wicked eye accelerate B, which sounds like something you would say in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Ignore evasion for three turns. Increase on crit star absorption rate on arts cards for three turns. She has two of them. Uh, increase on critical damage for three turns. Increase on NP damage for three turns. And the arps absorption is 500%. The crit damage is 30%. And the MP damage is 20%. Her passive skills are independent action with VEX and Fae con Contract B+. Her third skill is an anti-caster attack attack damage aptitude and her rank b noble phantasm is the sn 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 snow summer beautiful drops of hoarfrost i'm not even going to try and pronounce the way if you know how way to say that feel free to tell me i'm always willing to learn and this is another deal one damage uh, deal damage to a single enemy three hits seals their skills for hey this works with charlotte <laughs> Uh, seals their skills for one turn, reduces, uh, and then the damage is 900% at level 1, and at level 5 it's 1,500, uh, reduces, or 1,500, reduces one enemy's arch resistance for a single turn, charge resistance is 20% at charge level 1, and if you get her to the final charge it's 40%. Uh, that's funny, is she meant to be used with the other one? <laughs> you could! Use her to hit him with the Noble Pansom first, and if they survive that one, hit him with the other one. And surely the second one would get them. That's funny. I had no idea that they had any form of synergy with each other, but that's that's pretty funny. Um, this is another. This one seems perfectly fine to me. A lot of the four tire summer units come in two flavors. It is usable in some way, and really nice to look at. And you have to kind of pray. This it's kind of funny because we're also coming off of like summer lost belt summer six. Uh, the one JP's having where all the four star units are like, some people are calling them the secret five stars because they're just insane with what they can do. They got like Chloe looping with Arash and they have a unit that increases buff duration. It's insane. So maybe that's not 100% true, at least on the JP side, but usually over here, um, the best you can hope for for a summer four is that they're either usable in some way, which is. Um, you can actually find a way to use them pretty easily, or they're just kind of nice to look at, and their gimmicks aren't the greatest, and you just gotta hope for a buff. That's kind of where uh, Summer Okita was for a while, and then they removed, they gave, they gave her, gave her a buff, and they removed her demerit that she had, which was the only thing that was really holding her back from reliably looping, because in the middle of the loop, she would stun herself, and that would ruin your everything. Uh, so that's typically where, what I expect from four star summer servants until again the one in JP that just happened where it's like oh god They went crazy on that one 
Uh, but yeah, that's funny. I kind of like that Anastasia works with Charlotte in some way. <laughs> Uh, next and final, Okita Soji, uh, Saber Altar. Okita's back, yay! We're gonna be able to do another Okita summon video. Let's go, another Okita Altar summoning video. Uh, she is a Saber, she has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Majin Sword, B++. Increases zone attack for three turns, increases quick and buster performance for three turns. It is 30%, 20%, 20% with a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Purgatory B. Charges zone MP gauge, increases zone critical damage for 3 turns, and increases zone crit star absorption for 1 turn. 30% uh, NP, um, crit damage is 50%, and absorption is 500% at level 10. Cooldown is at 5. Third skill is a sun is the Sun and Moon. Grand self invincibility for 2 attacks, 3 turns. Increase on MP generation rate for 3 turns, and it's 30% MP generation rate at level 10, and that's really nice, actually. Um, Magic Resistance A and Independent Action A are her passive skills. Her append skill is, uh, third one is an Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is an A plus quick. <laughs> 8 hits, so they actually remembered to make this one quick. Uh, remove all enemies' defensive buffs. Activates first. The defensive buffs are stuff like this that you see here. Like defense up, damage cut, quick resistance up, arch resistance up, busters resistance up, NP damage resistance up, evade, um, invincibility, invincibility anti-purge defense, ignore defense class of disadvantages, instant kill resistance, anything that is defensive in some way. She removes. And this is to all enemies. The MP level 1, it is 600% damage, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,000. The overcharge effect, increase on quick performance for one turn, activates first. Charge is 20%, and if you get it all the way to the final level, it is 40%. And yeah, this unit seems actually very good. Um, when it comes to quick loopers, if you want to be looping them, they kind of need a certain amount of things to be usable. And some of them actually have all those things and are not usable, like... <laughs> Uh, uh, like, um, Summer Ushiwakamaru, who had a lot of the things on paper, and then when you actually went and used her, she actually couldn't keep up with a lot of that, which was very unfortunate. At least on release. Um, she has eight hits on her Noble Phantasm, which is a good amount of hits. The more hits you get, you have, the better, because it gives you the more chances to potentially farm up NP generation rate. She has the ability here to increase her own MP gauge, which is uh, uh, one of 30%, which is respectable. Combine that with her pen skill for mana loading. It is possible to have start off at 50% and maybe it's because I'm just going off of Dantes, but Dantes, I've, with his buff, I was able to quick loop with just those two abilities right there and then Scotty kind of helping me out a little bit. At least I think I was able to do that. I don't know. The Nero Fest was a real fucking blur there for a bit. <laughs> but I remember being able to do that, but it also required me to, like, take out the enemy with his cards at the, at the final, um, for the final level, for sure. But the point is, depending on, this helps with a lot of CE kind of stuff, um, being able to charge your own MP gauge. And finally, she has MP generation rate, which is also the final key bit here, is that if you can't increase your NP gauge in any way, having your own, given having a way to have NP generation rate can help you a whole bunch, and in this case it's 30%, which is really, really nice. So I think, at least on paper from what I can see here, if you play JP, you would probably have a better idea than me at the moment, but I think that makes her viable to be able to loop with stuff. Would that make her the... I think that would make her... I can't think of too many... Obviously, I can think of quick saber units because that's Caesar, that's Okita. But in terms of AOE, I not a lot of them come to mind on the NA side at the moment. Let me see if I can look. I feel like we've done this before. Where I've looked at the quick AOE saber servants, and it's like not many. Um, no, a lot of these are Buster Arts, Buster Arts, single target. Which it was it Deermood? Is Deermood the first? Was he single target? He was single target. I'll be damned. Is she really? No way. She it's Alstal. No, Alstalfo is also a single target. Uh, yeah, he's a single target unit. Was it Hajime? I thought he was Arts, isn't he? He is Arts, so it's not him. Was it really just? Was it Santa Karna? No way, a Santa Karna AOE. Yeah, he's damaged to one. No. 
Yes, he's damaged to one. So yeah, I think for... <laughs> is she really the first? No way, it has to be Lakshimba. And now at this point, I'm like, there's no way in hell that she's the first. There we go, she's the first, <laughs> but the point is that I'm trying to make here is that there's not many that you can think of off the top of your dome. So if you are someone who invests a lot of quick and you have a, and you're like, damn, I really just don't have, I really wish I had someone dedicated that can kind of take down the Lancers. I don't always want to use Berserker or Dantes to take on everything or Voyager because he can also be used for a bunch of you do get what I'm saying. You want someone that's actually going to deal type effective damage to the thing you're trying to grind. I think she ends up being very good. And yeah, I think that's cool. I definitely am going to be going for her, that's for sure. Um, boy, are you going to be going for Okita Summer? No word back. So that's a maybe from him. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be the first banner that's going to be up for Summer. Um... A lot of people are likely waiting for uh, Summer 2, which is the one that has Kama, Canis, and Sei, which honestly is the banner that I'm looking forward the most. But for this one, I can do a couple summons and hope to get uh, Chances Are Okita and maybe one of the fours. I'm not super, super, super crazy for Anastasia or Charlotte. Um, I think both of them are neat, cool characters, and I like that they got a Summer version, but neither one of them really is typically my favorite. For Anastasia, I actively don't use her. And I remember having beef with her, but I can't remember if it's because I was just having beef with the quality of writing post um, singularities. I don't remember. It was a it was a funky time at the time. But either way, it's not because of anything of her. So a lot of people are likely going to be saving for summoning to summoning two. And then the other half of people are going to be saving for summoning two uh, for summoning three, who has Domin, who is one of the best quick servants on NA for sure uh, on on uh, JP I'm not 100% sure but on it on the NA side he is definitely one of the best ones out there for it and Christopher Columbus is limited and I don't think anyone actually likes Columbus but there's some people out there who would say I would need that guy somewhere out there the artist behind Christopher Columbus I know he loves Columbus I wish he kind of got a different character based off of how much fan art he draws of Columbus, but I digress at this point. Yep, yeah, that's what it's looking like. Um, again, you would, if I were to take, again, a haphazard guess as to when the event itself is happening, I would probably guess sometime in the 28th. So it's going to be a long wait, um, but there's not going to be very much for us to go in between. Some other people would probably be like, hey, are they really going to make us wait that long? And my gut says, yeah, they probably are. That sounds about right. That sounds like them. <laughs> Some people thought that they were going to save hunting quests for after summer, and they, they did not do that. Some said, hey, is it really, does it really make sense to have back to school in the middle of August? And I was like, yeah, you're right, but they said this is happening first. And it did end up happening first. So there you go. That's it for today. When the actual banner comes out, we'll be making a summon video where I'll be summoning for it at least. Try to see if I can get Okita Alter, because I really do like Okita Alter as a character. And this uh, summer version seems really cool. And yeah. Tell me if you're going to be summoning or not. Which one are you waiting for? Maybe you're here to save for even beyond summer. Now that summer's actually coming close, it's time to think about, hey, I have to actually summon for these dudes now. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you for making it, especially if you made it all the way to the end here. As always, you can always show support by leaving a like and subscribing. It helps out the channel a whole bunch, and it helps me a whole bunch. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that I might actually make it to 3,000 subs pretty soon. Uh, which is not something that I would be thinking would be possible, but here we are. That's cool. Uh, did I just click something wrong? Okay, no. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I got to take it to the actual site. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you guys in a later video. Peace out. Bye.